Okay. Good morning. Today we are going to talk about the web of linked data. And in particular, we will focus on one, of langu one language that is SparkQL that is, uh, helps to find information in the semantic web. So there's a specific structure for the queries. It's quite similar to SQL that everybody knows, but has some difference, of course. And also we will talk about this linked data project. So uh, today it's uh, about two hours because the last hour you will have a sort of an exercise with Fulvio. But uh, we will see three different parts. One is uh, the basics of linked data and uh, the syntax of SparkQL. Then we will see where the data come from and then we will have some hands on on uh, querying a real uh, RDF database. So now we are focusing in the stack of semantic web on this part. So uh, we have this RDF interchange format that you have uh, talked about uh, Monday. And then we will see how this um, new language, SparkQL, is going to retrieve information that is in RDF format. Okay. So um, we are talking about the web, what is called the web of linked data, in which the added value is that uh, everybody should provide, besides the human readable information that we are used to provide in documents uh, uh, which are uh, human readable, also structured information in an interchange format, which is RDF, and uh, then we are able to, and this data is possibly linked when you say something about Berlin, it's very nice if you link to the DBpedia RDF um, triple store so that everybody is going to have extra information about Berlin. This is the idea of linked data. And then, we, so we, the web of data is based on a number of technologies, which some of them are about querying, uh, uh, that is SparkQL, other about interchange format, RDF, and then we have other kind of technologies that are useful to uh, automatically or convert, um, for example, web pages in HTML or documents in XML into RDF, trip, into RDF, so to provide information for this triple store. Okay, so a few basics of uh, uh, SparkQL. SparkQL is called a simple protocol for querying remote databases over HTTP. So it, the name says what it does. Uh, there are two versions now. Uh, the first one uh, is it from 2008. The current recommendation is from 2013. So they are uh, quite recent technologies. So the idea is that uh, as uh, SQL queries, um, query relational databases. Here, SparkQL queries are designed to, uh, que to make queries to have results from graphs. So an RDF graph is a set of triples, so subject, predicate, object, and, SQ and SparkQL results, uh, results are triples again. Okay, The same thing that uh, SQL it works on relations that are tables and the results are table. This is exactly the same situation. So it's a similar situation, let's say. So SparkQL can have a very simple syntax to express queries uh, from different data sources. So uh, if the data is native RDF or has been converted in RDF via middleware, then uh, in this and saved in a store, it's called a triple store, then SparkQL is able to provide results uh, uh, from the queries. So uh, again, the idea is that everything that is uh, machine readable should have format of a triple. So um, the serialization is not important. You have seen RDF and you've seen that there are many different syntaxes that uh, are able to express this uh, idea of a graph that has a subject, a predicate, and an object. So 
Spiral had to choose one of this way of serializing RDF uh, diagrams, and the choice was done on the turtle uh, syntax, which is a and triple extension. I will not repeat again what Fulvio said on Monday. This is just an overview of the kind of notation that uh, allowed to write triples. The highest level, or the, the most, uh, the broader language is called N3, notation three. It has been proposed by Tim Berners-Lee. And then there are subset, uh, and triples is part of N3, uh, we have turtle, which is an extension, and triple, it is inside entry. The SparkQL query, and here is written SparkQL where, because the same expression that you use in writing RDF are used in the where clause of the SparkQL notation. The where is where the condition is. It's the same thing that you are looking for all the suppliers that live in Milan. So the where gives the condition. In SparkQL, there is a where condition that has uh, to be written in triples. We will see the details very soon. So this is just an overview. So very, very briefly, turtle is called TERS. It stands for TERS RDF triple language which is one of the serialization format for the RDF. And, uh, okay, it's a super set of the minimal and triple format. So, uh, it's no specific standard, but it's very popular because it's a very good um, uh, trend, say, compromise between the, expressi the, the expressiveness and the fact that it's easy to be machine processable, process, to for machine processors. So, uh, this is an example of a diagram. Uh, so, there are a few statements about a URI, which is me, uh, which is not me exactly, but it's someone else. But you can say that this person is a type person, it, the name is Eric Miller, has an email and a title. So. Uh, of course, you have to use uh, suitable um, properties which belong to a vocabulary. Mm? But I'm not going to repeat what I'm sure Fulvio said. So the title notation is very, very simple because simply says the subject followed by the predicate, followed by the object, and then a dot. So very, uh, it's not specifically, not very verbose compared to uh, the um, XML serialization language, and then uh, and besides, uh, it is possible to define prefixes, so notation is shortened uh, even more. So just this is uh, says that uh, the label according to the RDF vocabulary of John is John. And then you can, you, you've seen this, so I just, uh, this is just a review. Uh, you can write single triple with subject, predicate, and object, dot. Then you can write more than one predicate and object for one subject. So these are three statements for which John is the subject. So John has a label John, is a type person and as known page which has this URI. Hmm? And in this case, there is not the dot at the end, but it, there is a semicolon. So you are writing different statement about a single person. Why am I uh, reviewing this? Because this is the syntax that we will use in the SparkQL queries in the where clause, okay? So this is the same language that you will use uh, soon in a SparkQL query. Mm. So, uh, of course, there are the prefixes in which you, there are abbreviation of this, um, this, this uh, let's say, ontologies, okay, these vocabularies. So, there is a default uh, prefix that is represented by the, the colon, and then you can uh, look for different ontologies and vocabularies when you need specific properties or or predicates that belong to a given context. OK? 
okay? So the, the identifier can be URIs, so everything that has uh, a description or uh, can be qualified names in which they are practically URI, uh, abbreviated names in which you define uh, the, the property, for example type, and uh, the, the vocabulary it belongs. So RDF uh, column type means that you are using the type property or the RDF vocabulary. And RDF is defined as a prefix uh, on top of the, the piece of code. You can use literals that are the constants in which literals can have extension in sense that, for example, John is simply a string, but you can say that a string is in a given language with the syntax, or you can also provide details on numbers, for example, saying that 1.4 is in uh, below has uh, the structure of a decimal number has uh, de defined in a X schema vocabulary. So everything gives, uh, let's say, uh, you can give information, extra information taken from vocabularies and definition that are uh, stored in a, in a, in a separate context. Okay, so. Another thing that you have seen are the blank notes. When you want to say a property of uh, some, let's say, individuals or, or anything, and you want to define more than one property, but you're not really interested in, in the subject of, uh, of, this, uh, of these properties, you can define blank notes. So here, for example, there is uh, someone that has an address, the address is not specifically important, but the address is composed of different parts. So there is a city, a street, a state, and a postal code. Hmm? Okay, so, and the blank notes in the title format, that will be the one that we will use in Spark UL, uh, says that if the blank node is the, pr in the object, then you can represent it with two brackets, square brackets, or with this notation in the X. Instead, if it's the subject, for example, we are he, there, we are saying that John has a father who we are not interested in the URI of the father, but we likely be interested in many, many properties of the father. So in the sense, we will define it later on, what are the properties of the father. Uh, here, and there are two equivalent expressions, so you can use either uh, the square brackets or the X. Here, you are talking about uh, someone that has named John. Maybe it was, you can connect uh, with the previous one and says that John, well, let's say, John has a father, and the father has named John, in this strange case, but uh, uh, just an example. Or here, you have two different statements about the same subject, which is a blank note, and you say this URI, this, is, this person, this, uh, this thing, thing, uh, let's say, which is the most general concept, uh, is the author of uh, The Lord of the Ring, and uh, his name is Tolkien, okay? Mm. Lord of the Ring is uh, something that has been defined uh, in the default prefix uh, in this case. So this is the syntax, okay? Then you can define collection. For example, you can say that the, this document has two orders, John and Mary, simply by uh, using the notation of the parentheses of the brackets, okay? So, and because the in, in, in triples, you should have written in a different and more complex way, which says that uh, this document is an author, which is a list of, uh, of elements that you, in which you have only the predicate first and rest. So, uh, so you say that the first author of this document is John, and the rest is another list in which the first element is Mary and the rest is nil. That means that is finished, okay? So this is very verbose and complex also to read, 
so there is this uh, simplification that allows you to define collection of elements as predicates. Okay. So this is an example. Uh, this is a document in which you define uh, three prefixes, RDF, doubling core vocabulary, the example prefix uh, which is the default, and you say that this document has a title, RDF XML syntax specification revised, has an editor which is a blank node, and this editor has a full name, the backet, and the home page is this one that is written there. So this is a, just a, a short, will probably be useful for you in the next exercise, but anyway, this is a, a short example in the turtle notation, RDF notation. So, so uh, all these RDF statements are maintained in order to be accessible in what they are called RDF triple stores. Hmm? So they are specialized databases that contain, instead of relations, they, they contain RDF triples. So, uh, of course, you can imagine these triples as a diagram in which it's very clear to understand, it's very clear what is the subject, what is the predicate, and what is the object. Uh, so this Austro Australian War Memorial is located in Canberra which is located in uh, ACT, which probably is the region of Australia, and it has been unveiled in 1941. So, and these are separate triples. Of course, to be stored in a database, they have to be stored in a uh, specific notation. There are, of course, it's very easy to, to, there are lots of programs that convert one notation into another rotation, so you don't have to worry about what is the notation of the, of the database. But the idea is that uh, these triples are stored in somewhere, and that these are made accessible for external queries. Okay, so this is a, a comparison between the databases we are used to, so they are relational databases, uh, with respect to RDF triple stores. So the data model in relational databases are the tables or uh, the relations. In, other, in, in our case, the data model are the RDF graphs or RDF triples. So everything are statements. Uh, there are instances are records in a table. So they are the rows of the tables. And here, each instance is RDF triple which is a subject, a predicate, and an object. Hmm? Uh, to make queries, to query a relational database, you use the SQL uh, language. Here you have a SparkQL language, which has a very, it's very similar somehow. And of course, there are indexing mechanisms uh, which are very well de developed for relational databases that are optimized to evaluate queries and to fasten the results uh, when you uh, query a relational database. In this case, uh, the mechanisms are completely different uh, because they, are, they have to be optimized in finding, in matching graph patterns. So, just a few overview, a little overview of the syntax of SparkQL, which is very familiar. Of course, you have to define the prefix. It's optional in the sense that if you don't need the prefix, you don't have to put them, but it's very unlikely that you don't use any kind of um, existing vocabulary, which is bad, by the way. Uh, the idea is not to invent your own vocabulary, but use as much as possible voca existing vocabularies, because this makes things much more usable from the outside. So you can define the prefixes, which is very similar to the turtle notation. Simply, it's, it's, it's a little bit difficult, different because it's used prefix in uppercase letter without the, 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 the notation. The notation is slightly different, but the idea is the same, OK? Prefix and prefix, and the rest is equivalent, so you define the prefix and you write the URI of the prefix mm, of the vocabulary. Then there are the the key 
uh, the, the first um, clause is select, in which you define what you want as a result, as in SQL. You can optionally define where, which is the graph you are querying. Be why this is optional? Because normally you query a defined uh, triple store. So we will see example in which we, we query the DBpedia vocabulary, there are other vocab uh, sorry, triple stores, but in general you query one single triple store. But using more than one means merging different uh, triple stores, which is feasible. But if you uh, query one single, it's, uh, you, you don't have to use the from. Then there is the where, that is uh, the condition, so you say what you want to retrieve and has a query pattern that will be written in this turtle notation and we will see that. Then you have the possibility of using some uh, query modifier which are similar to the one that are used in SQL, uh, for example group by having, order by limit and offsets are because if when you want a, a very uh, and, and short number of results. Hmm. Here it's very different from a relational databases because as you can imagine when the usually relational databases are very well in control of the, of the designer, they know that all, all the, the sentences are correct, or sorry, or, or instances are correct they have a fixed number and so on. When you are talking about triple store, there is lots of information coming everywhere because it's been converted from several sources maybe. So the information is not at all complete. So you can find some statement. We will see when you look for DBpedia, uh, the concept for example of place is very, very general. A place can be a city, can be an area, a geographical area, can be a country, can be a continent, can be anything, okay? So everything is more relaxed, so it's, more, it's much more normal to find strange information hmm? we, because it's, uh, we are in an open world uh, assumption, hmm? okay? So it's, uh, the idea is that you don't have to expect results as good as uh, when you query a relational database, okay? Here is a link if you want to uh, further see something. So here is a very, very short example. Here you define a prefix, which is the doubling core vocabulary. So you can use the, what you, uh, the, 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 the properties of uh, doubling core, for example, title, okay? And here you say that you want to find a title of this document. So here select uh, has a variable. Hmm? The variables are, have the question mark at the beginning, so it's, uh, you can distinguish variable because they start with uh, the question mark. So select title, okay, where is the condition? Okay, from is not there because usually a triple store provide an endpoint where you can query this triple store, so it's evident that you are querying the triple store that, that provides you uh, the environment, the program that runs uh, SparkQL queries. So uh, this says, I want a title and the word is a triple in which you have to match what you know with what you don't know. So here it says you have a lots of triples, lots of statements, and you want to find the one or the ones that has as a subject this which is provided, is fixed, okay? Then you have to find, okay, some triple in which you, you have uh, this uh, predicate title and goes to somewhere that you don't know what it is and this is what you want to know. Practically it's like saying I want the title according to the Dublin core vocabulary of this document, of this book. Okay? Of course if there is in the triple store a statement in which this is the subject 
this is the predicate which are known and something there, the query returns this. So if it's written that uh, this is an uh, introduction to the semantic web, then you will retrieve the information introduction to the semantic web. Okay. So in where there are list of triplets. So we have this prefix mechanism to abbreviate URIs. We here you have the, the variable or the list of variables that you want to have back, and then the query pattern, a list of triple patterns, this is very simple, only one, that you want uh, to, to, that is the condition of your query. Okay, optionally from gives you the name of the graph. Mm -hmm. So, select uh, once a list of variables, each one starts with a question mark and is a string, and then if you have more than one, that is the, the comma is the separator of the various, uh, of the various uh, variables. So here you want the name, here you want uh, X and title. Mm? So it's exactly as you, as you do in SQL. So the where is, is the part more in, in, interesting. So the graph, the where has a graph pattern. The graph pattern to match is a set of triples mm, in which uh, subject and object can be URI, can be qualified name, can be blank notes, leader or variables. Okay? And the predicate is anything but uh, a leader. Okay? Of course, it has to be something that has been defined in, a sort of in, in some vocabulary. So, uh, the graph pattern to be useful has unbound symbols, that means that are variable inside. If I go back and here, it would be very interesting to say that uh, this book has a title and I write here a title. Of course, uh, it's just a statement, but I want something new to know and this is an unbound variable. Okay, unbound variable means that I have to match it to somewhere in the graph that is available. So the idea is to find unbound symbols. Hmm? That means that I have to find all the symbols, whenever possible, that are subgraphs in the RDF uh, graph that I'm querying. Hmm? So if there is such a selection, the query returns the unbound resources. I have an example here. So. If I write the condition subject, uh, which is, I, we suppose that is this book as before, so it's known, while the predicate and the object are unknown, okay, it's like to say that I want everything, you want you, every statement about the subject, okay? If here is written that the subject title is uh, introduction to semantic web. Here is written that the creation date is uh, 1999. Here is written that the author is Tim Berners-Lee and so on. So the P are everything you can say about a thing. So all the predicates that are uh, recorded in the triple store about the subject and O is the value of this property. So, uh, okay, so if you are in a situation in which you want to know, uh, please give me, tell me everything that, I, that we want to know about a given person, then I can write a statement like that because it will return me everything I want to know about, uh, about uh, a subject, okay? It matches all the possible statements that have subject as they have a given subject. Hmm? Okay. How do I write this? I write like that. I want select. Like, well, there is a comma here which is not there, but it works also without a comma anyway. But I want to select uh, the predicate and the object 
in which a given subject, which is not written here, has a relation with, uh, I can find this, okay? And the query returns the list of matching pairs, okay? Uh, okay. Let's see another example. Imagine that we have this uh, graph. Of course, it is a list of uh, statements in RDF. And you want two variables, category and value. Okay, so cat and val, uh, in which you want to, you are talking, you have two statements about the same subject. Uh, X means it is any possible subject I can find, any node. Okay, so any node, uh, of course, this can be, this exists, but I can, I'm not interested in that, so I don't visualize it but possibly it's something that I can write, of course. Hmm? And I want here two different statements in which uh, what is known is the predicate. So I want a node which has a value, hmm? so has a property value, and the same node must have a property that is called category. Hmm? I don't care what is this node, but it must be the same, because if I say x there and x there, means this is the same node. So, practically, I want any node that has two properties, okay? For example, full slide doesn't match, because there's two properties, that are, I, only one property that is called data. And data1 has value, and as category, so this matches the x. This data too also have a value and have a category, so it matches also, okay? Mm -hmm. the, the square, the, the rectangles are leaders and the nodes uh, which are anything else than leader are, are the, the ellipses, okay? So, here, the x matches data 1 and data 2. So, what I have to retrieve? I have to retrieve everything that has a value. Okay? And I want what? The category and the value. So, let's say that this is x. I want to visualize the category and the value. So, here, we have a category that is called total members, okay? Then I see what is the value, okay? It's, for example, 100. This one is the one that is matched in, in, uh, in red here, okay? But this is, of course, because you don't see it serialized, but somewhere is written the other one, RDF value, 100. Then there is another statement that says data one, uh, that, uh, that, let's say, value 200. Hmm? Then there is another statement that says data one, category total members. Hmm? So these total members exist and also a list of possible values. But I want, in this way, I want all of them because here I have a list of statements which are independent one at the other. Hmm? Here is just a, a very nice way of summarizing information visually, but this means that there are many statements. Here we have a statement that says full slide, data, data 1, full slide, data, data 2. There is data 1, RDF value 100, data 1, RDF value 200, data 1, RDF value probably 300, and so on and data one category total members. So he matches everything he can, so he find uh, that uh, the data one are the F well, 100 and category, so I found this one. But also, he find out that total members are also 200, and we'll find many others according to how many RDF value are there. Hmm? So, the first here, the first row 
written here has to do with this X node. But there is another X node that uh, gives you a contribution to the result, which is data 2. Data 2 also has a list of statements that has to do with value 1 and 20, 10 and 20 and the category. So again, I can find full members, which is the other category, 10. Then I will have full members, 20, and everything else. Okay. This is an example that shows how this pattern matching works. Practically, um, of course, <coughs> when you have everything serialized, it's simply like, like if you, oh, uh, you put on, let's say, uh, a new uh, sheet on what is written and you try to match transparent that you try to every to work for every triple that is in the database and see if it matches. Mm? If it matches, then there is a bound and the bounded variables are the one that you want to, to show. Of course, there's no problem in which you use a variable and you don't show it. There's no, no need to show all the variables that you are using. Mm? So it's sort of a temporary variable, but you are not interested in what is this. Okay. And this is another example in which, just to show you some idea, uh, in which you can also filter uh, results and say that, for example, I'm interested only mm, in the matches in which the value is higher than 200. So it works. Uh, it founds all, only the matches in which this condition is true. So uh, let's say the X matches these two statement, okay, but only some of the uh, property matches also this condition. So the first one that was total member 100 is not true, so it's discarded. The second one, total members 200 matches, and so I find it uh, in the result. The second X doesn't have any matches because it, the values are all below 200, lower than 200, okay? So I can filter. For example, I can find all, uh, all, ca all, all cities in Germany that have a population higher than 1 million, okay? This is a kind of filter. Or I can find all the artists whose gender is, uh, is uh, are women, okay? So I can use uh, conditions uh, that are depending on the value of what is written in the RDF triple stores. Okay, uh, this is an example in which you can say more than, it's a more complex situation because as to do with, uh, let's say, with a more complex structure. Here, I want, okay, this is the same as before, so I'm looking for nodes which have a value and a category, like data one or data two, but I also have another statement on X, so another requirement. I want that X is the, pre the, the object of another statement, so it's like it is the, the, the it's uh, linked by another property that is contains, okay? So there must be an incoming link that says contains to match all this, okay? So here there is a contains, here there is not. So this X doesn't matches the graph. Hmm? So every statement has to be matched. So I want uh, a node that have a value and a category, but I want that there's another node that links to X. Hmm? I don't know, I'm not interested in what it is, but this, the same node that links to X must have another link, which is called link to, and a URI, okay? 
and I'm interested in these pieces of information, the value and the category, but also in the URI, or let's say of the father of the, lead, of the node I'm interested in. So I focus on a given uh, node, and I gi can give property of these nodes, or property that are linked from one node to this node. And this is the match, this is his AL node, a link, and this is the X node. At, some, at this point, it's like I superpose uh, my transparent sheet to understand uh, the, 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 the pattern, I found a pattern, and then I know that uh, value is this one, for example, category cat is this one, valid is, is this one, cat is this one, and URI is this one. Hmm? So, I can say uh, I want all the artists that live uh, in a city uh, that is in Germany, for example. So, I know what I want about a person that is an artist, so it's a property of the person or one not. I know what I want at the end, that there is a country that is called Germany. In between, there is a node, which I'm not interested in specifically, because there is Berlin, there is Stuttgart, there is Aachen, and so on. But any of them is suitable. According that there are properties of one node, which is a person that must be an artist, and there is another constraint on the country, which is Germany. But in between, there are many, many possibilities of matches each of, uh, of the countries, of the cities that are listed, let's say, in DBpedia. Mm -hmm. So I can give pieces of information that are related one to the other, as, as long as I create a graph which I want to match into, uh, into a specific setting. Okay. So here, the result is total number, 100, and is HTTP, but there will be another one, which is uh, total members, 200, and the same URI, and so on. This is another example in which uh, you can say, another simple example, that there is, the graph has a, let's say, compulsory part that has to be matched and another one which is optional. So you can find, let's say, I want the value, the category and the value of the nodes. But in case this node is linked by someone else, hmm, I want also the URI. <coughs> hmm? So here I have every node that matches this is included in the results. So we have data one and data two. Hmm? So total members, 100, full members, 20, and so on. Mm. But if optionally, I can all in case this X as a contain link that go to him, that goes to him, then I want also the URI of this link to. Mm. Of course, this data one has matches also the optional part, and so I add the URI. In this case, it doesn't match the optional part. It's anyway included in the result, but doesn't have the URI. Hmm? Sometimes it's uh, useful because uh, otherwise you don't find any kind of information, but maybe some information is more important and the other is less. We will see an example on that. Hmm? Okay. So, you have a lot of peculiar other, not a lot, but some other features. For example, you can limit the number of return results. Maybe they, you also for a matter of time, or you can say a limit to 100 uh, triples or whatever you like. You can remove duplicates. You can order, order by, so that sort. Uh, you can specify more than one graph, that means that you have some merge, so you practically, you can 
see if the same information is available in two different triple stores, you can, uh, let's say, construct a, a separate pattern and you can use data types when matching a pattern. For example, if you want that uh, uh, a number is uh, written in a given format, is a decimal number of an integer num number, or you want, uh, for example, strings written in English or in Italian, so you can, can do lots of matching, okay? So this is just that uh, show that you, you in reality, SparkQR allows you to make queries with a select, but also you can do something quicker. For example, you can ask whether there are matches without, uh, maybe because you don't know whether there are matches of your, pa matches of your pattern in the triple store. So you, if you say ask, and then of course you have to provide a pattern, then it says yes or no, true or false, of course. You can create directly new triples with a construct close, hmm? and uh, you can also you have also the describe in which is something like you, are, you want is the same as selecting all the properties and all the object of a given subject. Hmm? So. It's just to say that it's not simply for, for querying, but has much more. Hmm. So, uh, before trying a, a few, practically a few SparkQL query, uh, I just uh, want to make um, a note on why we do this search for triples, okay? So, it's very nice to have a language, it's very nice to have uh, this, uh, the, the possibility of um, querying RDF, but how can we find this data? Hmm? So, here is a very interesting uh, project that is called Linked Data Project, that is practically um, a suggestion, is, uh, let's say, is, uh, has to do with, uh, I told you before that the, this, uh, the semantic web has this peeled square that encourages you to open your data. Mm. So the linked data project is not a specification, but is a set of uh, suggestions, let's say best practices, to say how you have to do, what you can do to make your data available to everybody in a very easy to use way. So, um, because otherwise, if you don't have large amount of data available, the semantic web is meaningless, of course. You have to, of course, since uh, it's not relational databases in which everything is very uh, coherent and well structured here, it's lots of information that you have to filter, to understand, to work with, and under, if you have lots of information, it's very, it's much more useful also to find useful one and valuable one, and to filter what is good and what is wrong. Mm -hmm. So, uh, semantic web technologies, RDFS, OWL, SparkQL, only work if there is a lot of data available for them. Mm -hmm. So, the idea, the principle of linked data are very general, okay? It says, uh, you, everything you can talk about, give him a URI, okay? If you're talking about a person, give a URI to this person, and a unique identifier for everything you're talking about. It doesn't have to be something that is uh, digital, else in the net, you can talk about your, your, your cat, which is not in the net, but you can give him a URI so that everybody that wants to talk about your cat has a unique URI to use it, okay? So, if you use, URI means a unique identifier, but since we have HTTP that gives you a syntax for URI, the best is to use HTTP URIs, hmm? so there is a, a syntax, a common syntax to express this identifier. 
then of course not everything is on the net but if you provide user information even for the things that are on the net that are not on the net for example my cat if I associate to this URI of my cat let's say a page with a picture of my cat it's something that if someone wants to know what is this he can find a picture of my cat and the name of my cat hmm? and also I can write statement on my cat I can say that uh, my cat has a name that is Cleo or it is a picture that has this uh, JPG picture or I can say that what is uh, her favorite food and so on okay and this is something useful of course not everybody not, not, I don't think many people that are interested in my cat but if I'm talking about something else maybe an, the author of a book uh, or uh, someone that makes uh, free courses over the net uh, and so on but of course the more uh, information you provide the most useful is this information at all uh, of course uh, and so anyway if you describe something hmm, in a, in, in a standard, which RDF is the best thing you can do, it becomes more uh, usable for the other people. Then, of course, if you include links to other URIs, you, you help. You can say that uh, uh, your pet is a cat, but then you link the pet, the, the cat, to the DBpedia entry for cat. And so everybody that is interested in finding more information about a cat can go on and, gra and traverse the path and find extra information. So the idea is to uh, increase the amount of RDF statement over the net. Hmm? And this is also interesting, uh, this is related to open link data. What is what data? Give a rating of the data. Hmm? There are one star data, two star, three star, four star, five star data. Hmm? So when you want to provide, when you want to be really open, you have to try to give five star data. So one star data is simply that you make, is the basics. If you don't make your data available on the web, they are, of course, uh, on an open license, your data will not be usable. So first of all, whatever you do and you put on create on a let's say a creative common data license server license uh, and so on it's uh, at least uh, uh, people know what to do with your data you can of course write the data in any in any in any way for example you can you want to give information on a table and you can write a table directly in html you can do that of course you have to if someone is interested in the data has to see the data in the page human readable very good but it's very not, it's not machine readable it takes a lot of effort to take out the data of a table if it's written in html if you use excel and given an excel 5 it's much better because at least you can separate the content of the table from the rest of the document hmm? and this is two star, two star data three star means that instead of using Excel you use a, a non proprietary open format like CSV so everybody that does not have Excel can use the data okay and this is uh, an advantage hmm? if instead of using CSV you can use linked data format that that four star means that you write a RDF statement or at least you include in your information a statement written in languages that can be converted in RDF we'll see an example later on of this RDF a sta um, standard that allow you to include in a normal HTML page extra, let's say, text that can be easily and automatically converted into RDF statement hmm, to write, uh, to include in the same uh, HTML page information that are both human readable and machine readable. Hmm. So if you use RDF or a way to that it will 
create automatically RDF statement of what you, you do. Uh, it's four state star dat data. Five star data means that you don't write only things that you know, but you also are open to other uh, repository. Mm? So you say that when you say Berlin in your page, Berlin is the Berlin that Wikipedia speaks about. So you have this merging of different data sets. Okay. This is another picture in which uh, you can write, uh, if, if you want to provide information for the other, I mean, of course, you have to be willing to disclose your, 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 your stuff. You can write a PDF file, which is one star, open, uh, op open license means OL, or can, you can extract the information in, ex in Excel, and this becomes a reusable, <coughs> Or you write it in CSV, which is open format. Or you write it in RDF, much better, which is uh, URIs. Or linked open data is the maximum in which you also provide the, the link to other repositories, of course. Uh, this is uh, something that uh, costs uh, more and more to provider, but uh, give also a very important output for the provider, for example. For example, uh, Google, uh, when you make a search, if you write this uh, extra information in your pages, is able to provide you the summaries that comes with the results as well, uh, very effective because they can find important information in your page and not just the first three lines of your page. See an example. Okay. So this is just what you, let's say, uh, open data, great to have data accessible on the web under open license, but the data are locked in a document. So it's very, co costs a lot to find useful information for a page. If you have, uh, let's say, structured way, it's much better to find information, but it's again locked in a proprietary software. You need a proprietary software. Uh, here, your data not only is on the web, but everybody can access with uh, non-proprietary uh, software. Then the data it's not only human readable, but it's also machine readable. Hmm? So the best is to use RDF, but there are other solutions. We will not talk about them. And now there is the network effect, because not only you can link to other data, but if other people link to your data, of course, there is much more uh, access to your data than you would expect. Mm. So you are providing interesting services, people will know about you, because very often if you link to someone, this someone will recognize and link to you. So there are also lots of advantages in doing that. Mm. So here is just an example. If you are writing your uh, data in RDF and you say that you are a person, your name is that one, and you live uh, in Berlin, close to Berlin, and then there are entrance, there are triples about Berlin, for example in DBpedia, there is a node that is Berlin in DBpedia, which is linked uh, in with uh, population and uh, has a score subject, means that is a taxonomy, an entry in a taxonomy that says that is a city in Germany, and you provide a link between DBpedia, so instead of writing Berlin, you write DBpedia Berlin, Okay. Mm. Instead of inventing a new URI that is called Berlin, this will help and uh, make information connected. Mm. So it's very useful. This is another example of, for example, of different site, um, uh, website or web services or application that provide information about computer from different point of view. For example, uh, at the site bestbuy.com provide data about offers or about computers. So it's made many vendors and says that, for example, 
he has his own vocabulary, Best Buy, let's say. There's a MacBook and has a price specification, has a vocabulary that is called GL that has to do with, um, with money, practically. Prices, money, and so on. So MacBook at actually a price specification, so you say how much it costs, and at present cost uh, one thousand two hundred uh, dollars or whatever. Okay, and uh, others. So this site provide can provide information that uh, is very useful for buyers. And instead of writing only machine readable, uh, sorry, human readable information, it's also called in RDF the most important information, so that. Um, anybody can find them. Hmm? So, has some RDF statement. But there is a, the site of Apple, of course, Apple, that of course has lots of uh, information about the Apple products, only on Apple products. So, if the, this Best Buy not only provides information about the current offer, but says that what he's talking about is the same thing as what Apple calls MCB, or this node. Hmm? And how does it do that? Uh, there are specific properties in many vocabularies. You, have, uh, you probably talked about a little bit about uh, OWL, but you will see it um, uh, later on for sure. has to do with creating ontologies. And one of the properties of an ontology is that can, you should define the two nodes are the same. So I'm saying that this node is the same as this one. Hmm? So the people that want to know, uh, okay, I, this is an interesting price, but I want to know more about this, uh, this product. And it can follow this link to this link and find information that are available by, made available by Apple. Okay. Okay. But maybe I want to know something more general. I don't want. I don't rely on a vendor information, but I want to do to know something more about this product. And then, for example, Apple can provide a size that my product is the same that is coded in that practically in Wikipedia, mm -hmm. and it's called MacBook. And so I say it's the same thing. And from here. In DBpedia, there are uh, the DBpedia talks about everything. So it talks also about uh, more the common product that you can buy. So the MacBook uh, uh, is developed by Apple Computer, for example. Mm? So you extend your knowledge, okay? And also, maybe I'm one that is concerned about energy consumption and pollution. So I want to know. What are the characteristics of this? Uh, what does Apple, as a company, to to um, save carbon? To, okay, so save energy. And for example, there is another site that provides env environmental indicators, so waste, carbon footprint, energy usage, and so on. Because I want to buy a product that is cheap, but possibly that's a very good. Uh, value for price for value, uh, but also I'm very concerned on the environment. And here, okay, Apple, if you are interested in uh, make you understanding uh, what what it does for the environment, makes another link with RDFS, RDFS schema. It's another vocabulary, and that says a uh, property which is uh, non not exactly same as, but it's related, so see also. Hmm? And so I can see extra information. If I am able to provide a statement, human uh, machine readable statement about what is the, my information, hmm? but also I'm able to provide and link to other external data, my customers will be happier. Hmm? And uh, practically there are a few uh, of this um, uh, property that you can use. One is OWL same as, that means I'm talking about the same concept. Another one is RDFS C also, that makes a relation. Okay, so this is the idea of linked data. Okay, 
So uh, vocabularies uh, help you to, instead of writing whatever I want, if I want to say that I'm, I'm a person, I use RDF type instead of inventing my own name of the property. I use name coming from the fourth, for example, vocabulary, friend of a friend. Uh, and I use again f the base near that is fourth. So as much as I can use existing namespace and existing um, notes in a vocabulary, as much I'm able to link information and extend my, my knowledge. Okay, here are RDF vocabularies. I think that you have seen something of them also in, uh, in the last uh, lecture, but anyway, if you useful for references, I, I write it <coughs> there. Okay. Okay, so just a few lines. Uh, if you want to say something about what you're doing, when you want to na name things, you can use label from RDFS. If it's a person, you can use the vocabulary fourth. You can use uh, scos that makes you in a thesaurus. When you want to describe people, you should use fourth or V card. Uh, properties, when you want to describe project, there is an, um, uh, a vocabulary called DOPE. When you want to describe general web pages, you can use Dublin Core. Uh, when you want to describe ontologies, there is um, an onto uh, let's say a vocabulary that describes ontologies and way of representing knowledge. Addresses, you can use the card. Uh, model synthesis data or existing taxonomies you can call and so on. So the idea is use whatever exists and not invent anything if it's not absolutely necessary. Mm. Just uh, this, uh, uh, this story, a, little, a short story of this open data cloud. Okay, so we have the open data cloud uh, as it started. So a few information providers, that are these ones, decided to share their data so, and to link their data. Mm. So this, uh, the first contributors, just for curiosity, are this one, uh, computer science library of the, te uh, of the university, Technical University of Berlin, uh, Wikipedia, um, the, DB Tune, Jamendo has to do with music repositories, uh, geographical database, again for music, music brains, uh, uh, literary works on the public domain, reviews about anything, uh, Amazon API, data statistical information about the census and the word uh, factbook and so on. So this kind of information, they started to make available as a triple store all this information and they try to link each other hmm? okay so that was the situation in May 2007 when they launched this idea then have uh, a number of clouds here that has to do with September 2007 February 2008 and uh, October uh, and so on just to show 2009 11, uh, 10, 11, then I they stop to draw them, but there's something more in 2004. The most recent I found is 2000, it's very, very, very recent, in which you, it's, it's a gray, that means that there are lots and lots of links there. And then you can, there, there is written, the color depends on the, on the subject, for example, life sciences, uh, Pink and then linguistics is green, media, uh, social networking, and so on. So it gives you an idea of the huge amount of information that has been available. If you follow this link, is, uh, uh, you can have the updated uh, cloud and extra information. And uh, data sets are uh, DBpedia, for example, is a data set that means it's a set of triples 
published, maintained, and aggregated by a single provider. So uh, DBpedia is, uh, takes information from Wikipedia, um, okay. And also the link set is the, when there is a link, bidirectional means that DBpedia links to this Flickr, to Flickr, but Flickr also links to DBpedia. Hmm? Sometimes it's one directional and, uh, and so on. So, uh, okay, so it's huge effort. Uh, if you go to the, this uh, site, you can see uh, the colors separately. It helps you to understand wh where there is more effort. For example, in life science, there is a huge effort in maintaining and uh, sharing information. Okay. Uh, I, this is a couple of days ago, this is the number of triples that are available according to this uh, laundromat uh, site in which you can uh, give you an idea of how many triples are there available in the linked open data. This laundromat.org um, is a project in which you can give them, give you, if you give the pointer of your triple store, they will check them, polish them, let's say it's called laundromat because they, pol they clean it and make it available and they will link your project to whatever existing. So uh, this is, I just again I captured, these are the triples, this is, these are the triple store at present. So it's a very large number. So it's a large effort. And again, here you have an idea, if you go there, of what are the, main, the most important subjects where there is a fort in. Okay. So uh, do, I would, instead of doing maybe the, the I stop now, I would go on another 20 minutes, then I will, so I will finish, and then you will have this exercise later on, if you don't mind. I will try to give you 10 minutes of time before the exam. So I just want to show you the idea of what this uh, syntax is on open data sets. So these are, there are, you've seen, more than 100,000. So uh, these are some of them. Okay, so you can explore them if you like, you can find other of them, DBpedia, GeoNames, uh, Music Brains, and so on. So these are very popular data sets. And many data sets expose um, an endpoint. So give you, a, let's say, a web application in which you can uh, query in SparkQL. There are, uh, let's say, open in the sense, in sense that you define even a general endpoint in which you specify what is the triple store you want to use. In other ca cases, for example, the one that we are looking at now is uh, a SparkQL endpoint for DBpedia. Okay, so if we go there, here is the endpoint. Let's say if I can okay. Okay. Just go here. Close so I can cut and paste. So these are example of SparkQL endpoints. Hmm? But I want to go directly and how it works with uh, DBpedia, but I told you something about DBpedia already last time. So let's see some example of query, first of all. Hmm? I start to cut and paste so it will be easier. Let's see, for example, oh, I clicked the wrong link. So. Another wrong place. Okay, here there is already written a SparkQL query. So 
uh, says the default data set name is dbpedia.org, so it queries the dbpedia query. Then it's written what? Select distinct, that means is this, this thing the same as SQL? Concept, which means anything, mm? it's just the name of a variable, where this concept, something is a concept. <coughs> Limit 100. Practically, it finds everything that has concept as an object. Subject, predicate, object. Just to say what it does, you s if I say uh, run query, it will give me all the object of any property that are in my uh, DBpedia. I make limit of 100, so I cannot find more than 100, just to show you. But let's see the first query I have in the slide. It uses, well, a few prefixes which has to do with DBpedia and the ontology behind DBpedia. For example, DBpedia, one of the property is the birthplace. Here is written, give me all the persons that were born, born in Turin. Okay? It's written, I want the subject, I want to match a statement in which there is a subject which is unknown, it is what I want to know, that has a link that is called birthplace with the Turin uh, qualified names. Hmm? And Turin is the name tree of DBpedia. Okay. If I run it, if I run this, here is what I find. Okay. So these are entries of uh, the desire you arise. So, for example, Amedeo Avogadro, Paolo Soleri, Maria Luisa di Savoia, and I clicked some of And these are resources, these are URI. If I click there, I found the DBpedia entry of this, uh, this person, Maria Luisa di Savoia. Mary, okay, so here, yeah, by the way, I can also explore some other uh, statement that can be interesting. For example, I can find a way to express the birth date, not only the birthplace. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, here, okay. I can, uh, well, I'll, I'll show you later. For example, I can add another statement in which I also say that the same node was born in a date I don't know. So I can say person and I want to add the date. So I want to visualize the person and to everybody that was born in Torino and when it was born. Okay, I run the query. I did something. I, I wrote, of course, birth date. I follow. I forgot age. I did something. I did something wrong. I forgot I have to write a dot I think okay so here I have uh, the person the URI of the person and the date as it was written in database so sometimes also has a reference of the schema or that is uh, the way it's been written the the, the 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 date of course <coughs> sometimes there are two entries i said it's a dirty database and nobody polished it in the sense that uh, there is an entry that says uh, amedeo vogadro uh, as uh, was born 
in Turin in this date, and this is a different date. So you can find both entries in the database. Mm -hmm. So you don't expect to have something as clean as you would find in a, in a database. Okay. Okay, so in this way, you can find, uh, you can explore. Hmm? Here is similar, another example, which is uh, this one. It says that I want a place, okay, a person that was born in a place. Hmm? I don't restrict uh, Turin, but uh, in, in any place here, I run the query. And here is uh, place and person, hmm? which is what I found. Hmm? So the seventh century, someone has, wrote, uh, has written probably a wrong RDF triple, because it says that seventh century is a place, which is not. But we, we have no control on what is written. So uh, cleaning also, uh, this is interesting because it means that we have to clean also information. Uh, here, by the way, HTML is one possible format, but here you can have format in many different ways, for example in JSON. If I run the query in JSON, I have the information, there is a head, variable, place person, and I have the results. So all the bindings are here, so you can think about writing a program in which you extract information. Probably I didn't choose the best uh, example because it's very big, the, result, the, the, the set of results. But I can see every single result. For example, this is result zero. I open the place is a URI, it is called 11th century, which is not a place, and then there is a person that is this one. So there are different ways of, uh, of showing the results. Even interesting, there are uh, XML, spreadsheet, CVS, for example, the prex spreadsheet. I can open directly with Excel and it doesn't like the idea of the name of the extension, but it should work. Again, probably this was better to find a different example, shorter, but okay. And see that it gives me already the information in Excel. So the, 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 the format of information is not at all a problem, okay? The problem is finding the correct uh, query, and then the problem is the quality of the data that you can find. Here is another person, uh, uh, sorry, example, which I've done partially, which is I want the person that was born in Torino, mm -hmm. and I want the date of birth, and here, since I don't like the idea of having the URI as an identifier of the person, I want the name. The name is what fourth uh, name uh, gives you. So in this case, I have, instead of having the, the, the entity, so I, don't, I cannot link it directly to DBpedia, but I have the, this, uh, this entry, okay, and the birth date. Mm -hmm. So these are strings in English. Okay. This is simply a different syntax, and they chose it simply a different syntax. I can say three different statements about the same person without repeating them. Mm. Uh, I can also, uh, well, this is this uh, as str function that simply provides you with 
only a string and not the, the data type of the string. So I can show this to you. It is very similar, but doesn't show you the kind of the string. Mm. So this is something that uh, you can explore because there are many different possibilities. Here is a graph that is a little bit more complex. I want uh, a person that was born in a place which is in Italy. So I'm traversing the graph. So a person, birthplace, place, and this place is in Italy. Mm? as Italy is defined in the country. So here we go and we can see example running. Okay, so we have uh, this uh, list of persons and they said, what is the place? Of course, the place is, has been defined. So in many in some cases, Calabria, Campania, Umbria, Veneto, but sometimes it's also Mirabello Monferrato, which, so the granularity is, I mean, everything I write without a, a given convention uh, is what I can find. Uh, okay, so limit modifier I, allows me to give, uh, to, as, a result, have as a result, only a limited number of triples. Okay, uh, there's no, you can see there are only 25. And then I can use the order by modifier. I have also the limit, which is not a very good idea, but let's see happen. So I can write at the end as uh, we do in SQL order by descending or ascending. Descending means in the opposite uh, from the lowest to the highest and uh, apply to name but I don't want uh, the, the, the format um, of the string so just the, the string and that's it. I gave you a little bit more because again, put 50 run query and here I've, there is this, at the beginning there are something with strange uh, characters, this angel, but then it start to using Z and so on. So you can uh, use a s to sort information. Uh, and here is something more interesting. Okay. This says, I want a person that was born in Turin. I want the birth date. I want the name. Hmm? And I want that they have been, uh, the, the, the date of birth is more later than 1st January of 1960. So I want all the people that were born in Torino uh, after 1960, okay? And this is filter. And I want them ordered by name. We start to see something more interesting, okay? So, uh, Okay, Achille Occhetto, Adelaide di Susa, and so on, Alberto Collo. So if you want to know who they are, you can link on the, this Adele Garavaglio, I have no idea who is she, Italian stage and film ad actress. So you can explore whatever you like. Okay. Here are the slides that can be useful if you want to implement filters, if you want to say these are the, the syntax of conditions, okay. Here is another example. 
I want to find the musicians that were born in Turin. Hmm? Okay, so a little bit more complex, which is so I want a person that is a musical uh, musical artist, as defined in DBO. No, this A means is A is a subclass. Hmm? Uh, I want the art musical artists that were born in Turin. I want the birth date, and uh, I want uh, to show the name and not uh, the resource. I want also the description hmm, that comes from RDFS comments. If you want to comment uh, some, something, you can add an RDFS comment. And I want uh, to filter only the English description. Hmm? So because in DBpedia there are probably many descriptions. And here is what you can find. Achille Simonetti, and there is a description here. And with dates, it was an Italian and English violinist and composer, and so on. So we all have the musicians that were born in Turin, which are in Libipedia, doesn't mean that are everybody, but, and only the one that have an English description. And then, or, and then you can, Okay, mi ha preso un colpo perché non vedevo il pallino rosso della registrazione, scusate. <laughs> and then you can also, uh, this is another, find the musicians that were born in a country with a population higher than uh, 10,000 people, but not in the United States. So you can compose more and more uh, information provided that you have an idea of what are the uh, properties, but to, uh, to have an idea of the properties, if you explore DBpedia, you can find out what the properties are, at least they are the most common and interesting properties. So uh, we'll see this one and see how it's done. So you have a person that is a musical artist, which is not born in a country, and this is another variable. This country is a country, because this is the name of a variable, so it can be everything. So this is a country. This country is a population. The, I want the birth date and the name. Okay, so here I want the, the name of the person, the birth date, where it was born, and the population of the country where it was born. Okay, and then I can filter the population so that is higher than 10 million and also that I don't want the country of birth be equal to United States. So I compose it like that. And I want also to order by name. Hmm? So if I run this query, okay, I have this uh, Alexander Cartio was born, born in 1976 in Iran, and this is the population of Iran. Hmm? So it works. This last example shows uh, the example of optional, hmm? in which again I want uh, the, the musician that were born in Torino, and also the image when possible, when provided. Okay, so uh, here is the example. So, a person is a musical artist, was born in Turin, I want a birth date, I want a name, okay, and optionally, I want the thumbnail, so the picture, hmm, which is the object of this DBO thumbnail property. So, in case, and it's optional. That means that if it's available, I will, pro I will give it as a result. If not, I will give it not. So, if I run the query, I've done something. Ah, yes, I forgot to, that uh, here, for re 
prison of space, I didn't copy the prefixes. So I have to give the prefixes. If I forget the prefixes, of course it doesn't work. So here is. Okay, so Achille Simonetti was born in 1857 and I, have any, I don't have pictures, but I have this picture of Davide Di Leo probably, or at least the, the picture he provided, okay? So you can play with this. Um, what if I don't say optional? Let's say I, I delete optional, okay? If I delete optional, I will find only the artists that gives the, have the thumbnails, but there are few of them. So if I want more, in, more interesting information, and can say, okay, give me the information, and then if they made a picture available, I only I want to see the pictures. I'm curious. Okay. So the idea is that you you try you play with something. You, you have this uh, in the slides. You have all the um, the examples. Uh, you can play with them and try to extend it. The exercise that you will have to do next week has, will be making a query in SparkQL in DBpedia and do do a sp specific or tentative queries and provide the results. Okay, so. Uh, okay, just uh, uh, 10 seconds uh, because I said this. How you can provide data in for the SparkQL engine or natively or through databases that are converters from databases to RDF triples or through these standards uh, that are RDFA or microformats, microdata. The idea of RDFA, of this kind of uh, information, is that while you code in HTML, you add extra information hmm, that are related to, to, that allow to create automatically RDF triples. So if you write that the price, human readable price is 29.99, but you had a property that has uh, the property is called as currency value of a given uh, vocabulary, and you give that is a float number at this 20 and the content is 29.99. Uh, there are programs that convert, it takes this um, this tax and convert in RDF triples hmm, automatically, so you can provide information. Other these are the snippets uh, I told you before. Google looks to and looks if you have provided some form, some RDF uh, information, and use it if it can find it. And if it finds it, writes the most important information on the result of the search, which is very valuable for people. And it provides a micro form. It's uh, compatible with micro data. Uh, or RDFA or microformats. The difference is that microformats came at the beginning and you simply uh, the tag class to write properties. So it was very general. RDFA allows you to use specific vocabularies. Mm? So give, use uh, prefixes to define the property which are more meaningful. And then there are the microdata that gives you a very strict, uh, let's say, vocabulary uh, standard to write uh, RDF directly. So it, it's uh, very similar, but um, they are more and more machine readable and more and more easier for uh, programs to understand the RDF data. But they share the same objective to try to code directly in HTML pages or in any kind of document. That in, uh, there is another standard that's called Greedo that convert XML to RDF, well, that allows you to write a statement in XML files. But the idea is to um, encourage people to write information 
both human readable and machine readable in the same document so that it's uh, easier to maintain because you have only one copy of the document and it's very easy also for machines to parse it and make data available. Okay, I, I talked a lot and uh, I, I stop uh, now, finish. I hope.